समस्त जन कल्याणी निरत करुणा नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विस्वर वसुदेव सुत देव कंस चाणूरमर्दन देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु ओके सो टुडे वी विल बी डूइंग अ वर्स टेन एंड आई टोल्ड यू दैट वर्स नाइन एंड टेन आर कनेक्टेड वर्सेज सो जस्ट लास्ट टाइम वी हैड डन द पॉइंटर्स राइट नाउ सेन वन क्वेश्चन अराइज इज अ पीपल से दैट द पॉइंटेड कैन नॉट बी सीन बट द पॉइंटर कैन बी सीन सो वॉट इज द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ द पॉइंटर विज अद पॉइंटेड सो द थिंग इज यू सी यू कैन नॉट सी द पॉइंटेड अनलेस यू गो वाई द पॉइंटर that is the importance of the pointer now uh, gurudev gave us this very very nice example uh, and that makes it clear the importance of the pointers and that is that supposing you draw a line like in geometry you draw a line and you say the beginning of the line is point a the end of the line is point b okay now the line is 8 inches okay now a and b become pointers just think that a and b are pointers and the line also so you you want to know point c now if you just see the line you will not know where the point c is unless the pointers help so then you say 2 inches from point a and 6 inches from point b is point c so immediately when you measure 6 inches 2 inches and immediately here in the center you say okay this is c so you get to know c only by the help of point a and point b so this is the importance of the pointers and therefore all the upanishads and all the old vedantic texts they use pointers alone they cannot describe the actual Uh, supreme reality they only point at it come to verse 10 now prayan kale manasa chalena bhaktya yukto yog bale na chaiva bhuvor madhye pranam aveshya samyak satam param purusham upeti divyam it says at the time of death when an unshaken mind full of devotion by the power of yoga fixing the whole prana a breath in the middle of the two eyebrows he reaches that supreme resplendent purusha now these instructions actually if you go only by the word meanings as gurudev has written also they can be very confusing very confusing also and that is why the stanza is very controversial they say that the, at the time of death that is only at the time of death can you realize this is one question then with an unshaken mind full of devotion now at the time of death who can do that at the time of death you may be in great pain the the soul and body are taking leave of each other or you can say the pranas are leaving the body or the body is leaving the pranas whatever it is now the thing is that but at that time who can do this what they are saying that with an unshaken mind full of devotion by the power of yoga fixing the whole prana in the middle of the two eyebrows so they say how is it possible a layman like us will is bound to ask that this is impossible so why is this being advised ha huh? ye to koi keh de ki you can attain moksha 
the only way is that at the time of death somebody should fly like hanuman ji and get sanjeevani to you to wo to ho hi nahi sakta now if that cannot be done then that means this goal is unachievable so then how anybody is going to ask how what are you talking about so fixing the whole prana breath in the middle of the two eyebrows over here middle of the two eyebrows he reaches that supreme resplendent purusha purusha over here means the supreme reality this is the word from the upanishads so purusha just think uh, i mean i'm not going to details of it just understand that that is the life principle the supreme reality the pure consciousness the awareness whatever you may call it ha huh? call it anything or call it god if you like but whatever but understand this word purusha hmm? now dekhiye ab now let us come here uh, this i have told you that you know when they say at the time of death now this is not you it's not possible that's what everybody would say uh now one thing you must remember that not only this this stanza but this entire chapter is a is a uh, what shall i say um, higher education on meditation chapter 6 was very elementary uh, giving you postures how to sit how to close your eyes what to do what the asan should be what your place of uh, meditation should be and all that hmm? now these have gone higher now when they go higher they are describing to you single focused meditation of the supreme reality single focused meditation with your mind not running anywhere else okay now then wo jo time of death pe aisa kaise hoga time of death you may be concentrating on your pains you may be fully conscious of your body and how your body can get well or knowing that you are going to die your mind will run to so many other concerns you have anxieties you have regarding your home regarding your children your husband or wife you know all those your property your finances anything your mind can go to anything so how does one get the single focus it's very very important if you can't get the single focus it will never never happen so then if this is talking about meditation then death over here is obviously not the physical death meditation being a a huge exercise of the mind and intellect focusing itself it has to be mind and intellect is the ego personality the individuality huh? so here he is talking about the death of the ego the death of the ego the death of the individual personality again the student sits up nobody wants to die so nobody wants that the death of the individuality should take place see unless and until you go beyond the individuality you cannot reach this supreme individuality is just a means and a very limited means for you to go along with the pointers towards this thing hmm? now the moment of the death of the ego is what is talked about over here that you consciously withdraw you consciously withdraw all your attention aise hoga kaise sabse badi baat to ye hai na ki ye hoga kaise dekho i have done in previous verses that it is a lifelong practice it cannot happen suddenly it is a lifelong practice of constant meditative poise when every day regularly at a fixed time for a, for some time you try and withdraw your mind from the outside world and all externalities you withdraw your mind even from your body from your mind and your intellect and all that belongs to the body mind and intellect 
unless and until you bring it back with self control with yoga you know your mind will not be able to do get to this point it will never be able to get to this point and therefore the teacher prescribes certain disciplines for the serious minded seeker it's not an also ran thing ki everything else also we have done geeta bhi padh li humne kuch nahi hua most of the people will tell you that that i have read the geeta and i have read it many times over nothing has happened hai na wo famous thing about this man coming to gurudev and saying gurudev i've gone through the geeta many times but nothing has happened so gurudev said that how many times has the geeta gone through you if the geeta has gone through you you your mind is bound to turn that change in your individuality that change in your thought process the change in your lifestyle is bound to happen if the teacher is right whom you are listening to and the teaching is correct the teacher is right and you are sincere that means the sadhak has to be very very sincere only then it can happen acha aur kaise hota hai he is saying that mind full of devotion acha bhi ye devotion kya hai bhaiya it is not that bhakti it is not as i said last time also ke wo taali baja rahe hain bhajan ga rahe hain aankhon se aansu ja rahe hain and you are over uh, melodramatic in your expression that is not the bhakti he is talking about here here bhakti means total identification with the supreme reality trying to understand who you are trying to understand your real self and being totally one with that supreme reality sincerely when you make see the example given by shankara is that of two lovers do you have to tell the lover to think about his beloved no he is so hungry to be with his beloved that he is constantly constantly thinking about him or her that thing uska dukh aapka dukh uski khushi aapki khushi you know you are so so in tune with that human being or whatever you love that everything is together they say the body the soul the physical lives and the emotional lives all get into one that is the kind of devotion he is talking about that totally one with your creator totally one with he who runs your life totally one with he without whose help nothing can happen nothing can happen so that is a total submersion of the personality dissolving of the ego what he calls the death of the ego into that supreme reality and only that kind of devotion that is intensive identification complete identification and this happens with total surrender total complete surrender to his will we always impose our own will isn't it hmm. we think the lord is very intelligent he has done everything very intelligently par thoda sa hum bhi advice kar sakte hain usko hai na a little bit we can tell him but ki aapne baaki to sab bada acha kara hai ye zara thoda sa aapne gadbad kara hai ye theek kar do isn't it we all tell him that that just do this just do this why haven't you done this this is a flaw in your creation this is a flaw in your thinking because we think that for the small time little small time that we are here in this world we are highly intelligent okay so this is now this is the condition of that person who constantly abides with the self he is constantly in tune with that just like a beloved i told you like a lover no matter whatever else he is doing he is constantly thinking about his beloved somewhere at the back of his mind that kind of a thing hmm? so 
but by this is not easy this is not easy at all there are steps to it so what are the steps to it he says that how is it possible it is possible by developing the power of yoga he says yoga balena is stanza mein ye aata hai na yoga balena se that is the way how to do it now what is yoga bal dekhiye yoga bal is the is a kind of vitality it is a subtle vitality it is a strength that accrues to the meditator while he is doing his tapas it is also known as tap shakti tap shakti okay many people talk about this they misinterpret yoga balena to be the kundalini o kundalini jagrat nahi hui kundalini is the yoga bal this or that no i am not talking about the kundalini this is tap shakti in whatever form it comes to you aapke paas siddhiyan aa jati hain aapke paas equipoise aa jata hai aapke paas balance aa jata hai mind ka there is a beautiful peace sitting inside a meditator and he does not get bullied by external changes in life he cannot because that is the bal he has he is like a little superman inside hmm? so all the external things that keep kicking you from all over the world they do not affect him hmm? so that strength is called yoga balena and this comes from regularly daily practicing meditation for long periods of time mm. i told you it is not easy it is not easy because how do most people practice meditation ah uh, wo meditation to hota hi nahi as swami tejomanda says it is meditation and what is meditation kabhi kahin dimag ja raha hai kabhi kahin ja raha hai kabhi kahin ja raha hai you are fooling yourself if the mind is so externalized and so concerned with externalities then don't sit on the meditation seat get up from there or open your eyes do your japa see the day you cannot do a higher sadhana you should choose a slightly lower sadhana if you can't do even that then choose even a lower sadhana See, even in the Gita, Krishna advises that to people. कि ये भी नहीं होता तो ये करो, ये भी नहीं होता तो ये करो, ये भी नहीं होता तो ये करो. So you go down the ladder. Don't just sit and fool yourself that I am meditating, because you cannot. What happens is that love for the world will keep you in the world. ध्यान से सुनो, ध्यान से सोचो. love for the external world will keep taking you to the external world you have got to grow out of it you have to grow out of playing with toys which do not promise happiness or at the least they do not promise permanent happiness so you have to drop those toys if it doesn't your intellect tell you that all that you are doing is wasting time wasting time effort energy now the teacher here is telling you that to withdraw the mind from its endless agitations caused by its external running out you are constantly running out ha huh? and gurudev used to say coffee okay coffee 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 then you want to go and run and have coffee at any new place that opens up you have to go and taste the does the coffee taste different over there no it doesn't maybe you can make it better at your own home or one of your best friends can make it better for you but you run all the way because there is a new place open and they have to make money they have to make money on you so it is advertised huh sardar ji's coffee hmm? chai and coffee 
new new names new new deco and you like a fool go there aur karte kya ho wahan jaake just a cup of coffee the regular coffee hmm they give it different names they give it give it different flavors they give it different ways of presentation that is all so every fool spends a lot of his time doing this trying different combinations of the same food that one can have otherwise okay so these uh, you know you cannot go to the infinite by running towards the finite all the time now uh, a mature seeker what does a mature seeker do a mature seeker slowly slowly brings his entire focus his entire attention on to the on to what he is focusing on and he is able to do it by uh, concentrating they say na on the on the between the two brows he is talking about so between the two brows kya hai this is called the frontal portion of the head this is called the frontal brain or the frontal lobe of the brain right and this is the seat of steady thought it is also called the uh, sushmana nadi huh? sushmana nadi is here they say a chakra which can help you think deeply and therefore whenever you meditate you concentrate in the middle of your forehead but don't don't open your eyes and concentrate like that otherwise you'll get a headache is the sixth chapter has told you also but bringing the focus central is very very important and see in doing that you have to withdraw from the outer world so withdrawing from the outer world ka tum ye dekho don't constantly try to become someone if you are constantly trying to become someone or something you your all your energies are going towards that thing drop it when we drop becoming something other than what we are then you become your true self all externalities are gone because you do not want to imitate others like monkeys or reach somewhere because others are trying to reach so this monkey tendency from the ape age we still have don't imitate you do what you think is right for you don't don't deviate from your goal remain on your goal let not your mind jump like monkeys from bow to bow from bow to bow because other monkeys are jumping no no so this concentrate on the sushumna nadi that is the frontal brain over here in the middle of the two eyebrows and now he says fixing the whole prana between two brows is what he is saying hmm? now this is also he says mentioned a pranayam na na he says prana controlling the prana prana is not just breath please understand very clearly pranayam jisko aajkal this is a great fashion to do pranayam in yoga pranayam is not shwasayam shwasayam is breath control pranayam is controlling life's vital forces which inside your body are doing all the work the old rishis of old had classified these pranas into five it's a given in your text you know i'll read it for you it is pranas are their manifestation is classified under five headings what are they first is prana that is the faculty of sense perception which you can see with your eyes eyes nose ears mouth and all who activates them who gives them the power to gather knowledge 
that prana is called prana then apana apana is the excretory system excretory system is also not powered by you yes just think about it can anybody control going to the loo no i heard somewhere something very interesting they said what is the similarity between a, a loo and a grave a very interesting so this person answered the only similarity is you've got to go when you've got to go that's it so even when you die you can't help it even when you have to go to the loo you can't help it so there is another force pushing you there isn't it it's not you there is another force pushing you yeah so that is called apana then vyana vyana is the digestive system gurudev used to say that you eat up to your tonsils and go to sleep and who digests it for you when you are in deep sleep for 8 hours at night who is doing the work of digestion this is this vital energy called vyana hmm? acha then there is an, one more prana samana samana is the circulatory system the circulation of blood through all your veins and all your nadis in the body ha huh? is called saman that also happens on its own you are not doing it you are absolutely not doing it so there is this vital energy that does it for you and then there is the udana ha huh? so udana is the capacity in us to see beyond our present world of knowledge see world of knowledge what you can see through your senses is a different thing and the world that you have not seen not heard about also but you want to know about that is the power of udana and udana always goes higher it takes you to higher reaches than your other powers can do hmm. now all these faculties when they are temporarily arrested and brought into focus in the path of meditation when your mind is constantly focused withdrawing all the pranas this is not easy remember ha huh? it's not easy you stop everything when you are meditating the prana vitality becomes so slow it becomes so slow that amongst the yogis it is almost like as though the person is dead even if you put a mirror below his nose you will not be able to catch his breathing on the mirror the breathing is so much into the nostrils when you are meditating intensely and very deeply you can neither hear the heartbeat of the person even with a stethoscope and you can neither feel his breath so the pranas you know they you have controlled the pranas and the pranas are almost silent inside they are working but they are working so softly so so minimally that they you feel that they are arrested temporarily and they have stopped working that is why you must have heard that this med- yogi meditated for a thousand years a thousand years the you is not even your life span how did he meditate thousand years because of the control of breath and the control of these pancha pranas the life elongates so it is not just breath it is not shwasayam it is pranayam please understand and the meaning of the word prana is very different from breathing it is caused by breathing but it is not breath alone so aja so your externalities you have got to 
control. Hmm? And I've told you this that uh, now such an individual, when he is concentrating so deeply that even the pranas are rested, all his externalities are rested, his mind and intellect is quietened, his breathing is quietened, and his mind and intellect have merged totally into one, integrated into a certain direction. When that happens, that is called yoga bala. That is called yoga bala. And within that yoga bala, when the yogi is totally turned inwards, is that you can immediately realize the self. Okay. Now, uh, so these two stanzas I had told you are very, very important. And, uh, uh, you know, these are detailing what stanza uh, 8 has told you beforehand. And the stanza 8, second line was Paramam Purusham Divyam. We had just done it. Huh? So you must be remembering. And these two stanzas elaborate on that. Hmm? Now, <clears throat> coming to the next verse. This verse is totally uplifted from the Kathopanishad. Now, don't say this is plagiarism and this and that. Yeah, these are all today when people are making money on their writings. These great rishis leave aside making money on their writings. They wouldn't even give their names that who has written. Many Upanishads, you don't even know who the writer is. Veda Richai, you do not know who the writer is because they did not care to publicize themselves. They were not like us and they didn't think like us. So don't, uh, uh, don't um, visualize this. So this is lifted totally from the Kathopanishad, this whole verse. And we will read it. Yadaksharam veda vido vadanti vishanti yadyatayo vitaragaha yadichanto brahmacharyam charanti tatte padam sangrahena pravakshe. <coughs> now I will read the translation. <coughs> that which is declared imperishable by the Veda knowers. <clears throat> that which the self-controlled and desire-freed enter, that desiring which Brahmacharya is practiced, that goal I will declare to thee in brief. Sangrahena Pravakshe, the second line means in brief I will tell you. <coughs> Yadaksharam. Now, Akshara Akshara means that which cannot be destroyed. That is why even the syllable is called Akshara because we believe that sound is indestructible. Something once pronounced remains in the atmosphere. I have told you in my previous talks this thing. And that is why we never, never in India, we do not like to pronounce an inauspicious event that may happen in the future, like death. Nobody is death. You will not hear anybody mentioning anybody's death in words. Because that is inauspicious and we believe in the permanence of nad, in the permanence of sound. Because here it is also, that is why letters are called akshar. And here it is yad akshara, yad aksharam veda vido vadante. It says that state which is declared imperishable by the Vedanoas. Veda vida, those who know the Vedas. Okay? Those who know the Vedas, they say vadanti, wo kya bolte hain? Vishanti yadyatayo vitaragaha. They say that the essential to reach this akshara, the imperishable parabrahma, the way is what? Vitaraga. How beautiful. 
वीत रागा क्या है अच्छा वीत रागा मीन्स फ्री फ्रॉम अटैचमेंट फ्री फ्रॉम अटैचमेंट हाँ तो अभी क्या है कि सी यू हैव टू हाउ डू यू एंटर दिस स्टेट यू एंटर दिस स्टेट ऑफकोर्स उपासना ऑन द सिलेबल ओम ही कॉल्स इट तत् पदम तत् पदम इज द सिलेबल ओम सो वेदर यू वर्शिप द सिलेबल ओम और यू वर्शिप एन आइडल इट विल हैव द सेम इफेक्ट इट विल हैव द सेम इफेक्ट और एनी थिंग यू वर्शिप वेदर यू वर्शिप अ बुक it has to be a symbol it just a symbol whether it is a cross or it is a kaaba or it is a murti or it is a it is just to lift your mind to the higher from that to lift your mind to the higher so worshiping anything whether it is kaaba or kashi or or it is a stone emblem or it is a wood emblem or what it is has got no meaning they all symbolize the highest reality and they help only to focus your mind on that reality okay uh, so then upper how do you veet rag kaise ho sakta hai bhai tat padam is that goal tat padam that supreme goal and how does one reach it ha to unne do teen cheezein batayi hain number 1 is veet rag Vitraga is a precaution given by the teacher to the student serious student who is practicing meditation okay he says that you have to i said dekho kai log bade silly you know this thing idols that i'm talking about that it can be an idol it, it can be a cross it can be a stone it can be a book it can be a kaaba it can be a kashi it can be anything सम पीपल से हमारा तो मेडिटेशन गुल्फ खेलते हुए हो जाता है यू नो हैव सम आई हैव सम फ्रेंड्स हु टॉक लाइक दैट हमारा मेडिटेशन गोल्फ खेलता हाउ डू यू मेडिटेट ऑन गोल्फ नो आई एम कॉन्सेंट्रेटिंग ऑन द गोल्फ बॉल भैया ऐसा है कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम मेडिटेशन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज जस्ट फोकसिंग द माइंड एंड मेडिटेशन इज when the mind's creative powers when the mind's intuitive powers are awakened to reach the higher which you cannot reach through your mind and intellect okay so understand this that that is not now here the, he is advising he is saying that most of the obstacles that meditators talk about they happen because of lack of self withdrawal they are so much into the external world that they cannot bring their mind back aap notice karna some day if you are too much into activity of different various kinds in the evening when you try to focus your mind it doesn't focus it goes on to all those things that you have been attending to during the day isn't it so your mind is so conditioned by external forces that it is not these instructions are only for very serious meditators okay so you must you must make it possible you must equip your mind to focus and it doesn't focus suddenly you have to slowly slowly condition your mind and then focus on the supreme reality and there are these pitfalls are on the way the pitfalls are these are the pitfalls where you fall into those and then they it's like a rut you can't get out of it wo bar 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 aapka mind wahi pe jata hai you have to willfully consciously bring your mind back to what you were doing and also consciously bring your back mind back to what you are focusing on the supreme reality not the body and what the body is connected to our mind runs only to that the possessions of the body 
the connections of the body, the identifications of the body, what you possess, including your family, relationships, they, all these have to do with the body. So here you are trying to go beyond the body. And therefore you have to drop, you have to drop externalities. Even if you are all alone, see, guard your company. I say this again and again. You know, when you are withdrawing, be very careful of dropping that company which externalizes your mind. There are some people whose mind cannot lift beyond what you eat, what you dress up as, and what you buy as jewelry. Where did you go and eat khana? Aapke ghar mein kya paka hai? Aap kaun si saadi kharit ke lai? This talk, those people who do, it is better, you know, it is far better to be alone than be in the company, to be in bad company. Solitude is richer than the unwise company of people who draw your mind to externalities. How easily they do that? Easily they do that. They will tell you the name and address of the place where you can buy such and such thing. And then you go running madly to that place. And you are running about. So if you are doing that, then forget about meditation. You are wasting your time. The necessities of life are important. But beyond necessities, if you dissipate your energies beyond the necessities that you really require, then you are wasting your time. These are serious instructions for serious meditators. Carefully avoid all sensuous desires. Here he exactly says that you will have desires. Of course, even wanting to eat food is a desire, isn't it? Wanting to bathe, wanting to wear clothes is a desire. But these are necessary. But those that are just purely sensuous pleasures, those you must, must avoid. Okay? Now here Krishna, ye jo akshara word hai, he is quoting himself from stanza 2 of the same chapter. He has used this word himself. Hmm? And he says that, don't concentrate on the perishables, concentrate on the imperishable. So that is very... Now, ye jo raga hai, vita raga is a very interesting thing. You must, you must understand this very carefully. There is no force in Hinduism on dropping that which you are still fascinated by. Carefully, carefully. Hinduism does not compel you to suppress your desire and then go for meditation. No. It is guiding you into thinking very carefully of what you really require and what you do not require. And by doing whichever activity, what is the ultimate thing you get in your hand? Do you want it? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. But if you do not want it and you are still continued doing it, then you are wasting your time. You are absolutely wasting your time. Huh? So this is like, I always give the example of playing with a doll. You are so fascinated by dolls. But when you grow up and you get the best doll in town, huh? or you get the most expensive doll in town, do you want it? No. Supposing somebody gifts it to you, what will you do with it? You will gift it to the next child straight away, straight away. Because you have no desire to play with that doll. You have better toys. You have higher toys. You have toys that will give you bliss, that will give you peace. A doll will not. You are through with it. Marbles. Isn't it? How easily, when, when your little 
child comes and gives you those colorful marbles he's so fascinated with those marbles he gives them to you daddy keep them carefully don't give them to anyone don't lose a single one so you keep them and when the son comes back and he says give me back my marbles you easily give them away to him isn't it because you are not fascinated by marbles he still is this is the difference between a low grade seeker and a higher seeker or a more serious seeker he is through with playing with sens- sensuous pleasures and he easily drops them because he has no fascination for them right like you have by now dropped a lot of things that you were fascinated by when you were younger you are not fascinated by them anymore and you easily give them away hmm? because there is no rasa so vita raga means the fascination has gone from those things such a person acha here aur kya hai another very interesting hmm? another very interesting thing see vita raga is also that you focus on what you want not on the haystack if you are looking for a needle in a haystack don't focus on the hay shift your attention to what you are looking for hum log wohi karte rehte hain all the time uh, that then gurudev has given a very very good example which i would like to uh, take up and that example is of the flower a bud opens into a flower once the pollination has taken place the flower automatically sheds its petals no matter how beautiful and colorful the petals were once how fragrant the petals were the flower sheds them all why because it has gone to the next stage where the fruit is already being formed isn't it so when this happens in nature it happens with you and me also that when we can get a higher joy we like to give up the lower toys the lower joys nobody wants to run after a bicycle if he is getting a mercedes you will go for the mercedes so this discrimination comes into your mind that where will i get a higher joy i am not interested in the lower joys let the children play with them that is called vita raga hmm acha ek aur bada interesting uh, word which he uses over here is brahmacharya he says yad chanto brahmacharyam charanti now most of the people think there are misconceptions about this word as well brahmacharya means who is a brahmachari jo brahm mein vicharan karta hai the break up of this word brahm ka acharan karta hai brahm mein vicharan karta hai both are correct and so that is a brahmachari yes celibacy is part of that brahmacharya wow because once you start a family ha huh, then you need a house you need children you need schools you need this that 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 so many things come into play that is why the grihastha jeevan in hinduism is limited to those 25 years where you do all the work of a grihastha and then get out of it they ask you to leave ha huh? they ask you to go to a quieter place vanaprastha then you leave that and go to vanaprastha acha before grihast what is it brahmacharya because you are a student you are a student of the higher and therefore you withdraw your mind from all externalities to focus on that hmm? so uh, it is uh, like this that even the lord has said i am calm abhi aap log kahenge ki ye contradiction hai geeta mein ke the lord himself has said that i am calm and here you are saying that give it up no the lord has said i am calm to produce progeny when it is used to produce progeny 
so it is so strong a desire the sexual desire is so strong a desire that no human being is free from it and it compels you to progenitor it compels you to have children and bring up children but once that objective is through then that desire is supposed to drop off on its own through discretionary power it is stupid people who continue to play with toys of children right till the end of their lives so now <coughs> you you don't you indulge in things only till that time only till that period till you need them don't force yourself because that will be suppression it will come up so if you are fascinated carry on that means you are not so fascinated by meditation or not so fascinated by lifting yourself but when you are fascinated with lifting yourself these things will automatically drop off and that is what it is saying so we stop here next time we take the next verse 12 पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्णमद्य पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्ण वशिष्य ओ शांति 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 हे हरि श्री गुरभ्यो नम हरि